were first approached by Deep Silver about two years ago, which gave us a great run into this project. It's quite rare that you get to work on a project from a very early point of genesis right until the point of completion. One of the challenges that Deep Silver and the developer Dan Buster faced was how to make a legitimate historical version of what was quite a fantastical game idea. What we needed to do was to come up with an alternate history where North Korea posed a credible threat to the United States. A lot of the creative process, going back 18 months or so, was worked around how would we show in just a few simple iconic moments 50 years of history. It started back with the Apex Corporation in the 70s and the birth of Silicon River in North Korea. Even back then, their tech was way ahead of what was coming out of America. We wanted a sensation of constantly pushing forward and moving through time. This wasn't just going to be a complete CG piece. This wasn't going to be a complete live action piece. We wanted to use the best technique at the best time to get the best final result. From a visual effects point of view and a creative point of view, this project was really a big wet dream. I mean, it has everything. It has full CG shots. It has live action plates that are super detailed. It has huge matte paintings in the project as well. We worked very hard to make sure that each of the frames at its largest possible size would be a compelling master frame. From a lens point of view, we decided to go with an 18 millimeter, which is a very, very extreme wide lens. Into that frame, we tried to add as many details as possible that would really make sure that the overall piece would bear repeat viewing. Borrowing a lot of inspiration from Stanley Kubrick's famous one-point perspective, we created these huge slow motion wide shots that were traveling through the events that took us and led us to the story that you see in the game. What really appealed to us as part of the creative challenge was to make sure that a piece of video that was going to play before every single game could bear these repeated viewings. We hope that you'll notice new details every time you look at it. Because this was such a heavy visual effects project, early on we got Stellar Studios involved. Not only because they have one of the most advanced motion control studios in the world, but also it is a full green screen studio. Here at Steeler Studios, we focus on visual effects heavy shoots. So that means we've steered away from traditional filmmaking and we optimize everything for visual effects, both in pre-production and post-production when being in production. Leveraging the power of motion control really helped us in a lot of ways. It allowed us to organize the entire visual effect shoot much early on, blocking all the cameras, choosing all the lenses, and blocking all the scenes very early on using animatics in 3D. For the Homefront project, what we did was to optimize each scene that was sent to us as a previous file and made sure that our rig could do the move in the best possible way. That allowed us to really make sure the camera moves were realistic and actually worked inside the studio. Stiller provides us a full replica one-to-one -one of the actual studio in 3D. So inside a 3D application like Maya, we could see the full scale of the set, we could even see the rig of the camera, and also allowed us to block the scenes and tell the actors exactly where they should stand, because they could actually see their own CG representations in the floor at all times. Motion control was not only going to give us the opportunity to control the camera on the smoothest, smoothest way, but also have the opportunity to use less extras and to repeat plates if we needed to. Especially for visual effects, it allows us to not have to track the shots. When we're done with the shoot, automatically each camera move is created by our system as an FBX or Alembic that you can use. We never camera track anything at Steeler Studios. At any moment after we shot, even months later, we could still replicate the moves and we could still film additional plates and footage if we needed to. And that actually happened. We decided to reshoot some of the acting and some of the shots on the bomb Riyadh shot. That meant that almost four months after we actually shot the film, we could just load up the camera with the actual move we had before, load up the lighting setup, and have a complete replica that matched what we filmed even four months apart. 
early on, Fire.Smoke knew that we had to harness the power of the cloud to really get this job done. We wanted to make sure that the same people worked throughout, and so we had that consistent creative line going through from start to finish. Cloud computing allowed us to have some, certain members of our team who were actually not in location in London to still work seamlessly and remotely with Fire.Smoke and with our studio. The boss is going to join the call. Also, because we had a small team, creativity flourished because of that. Because it allowed us to experiment a lot more. And that really gave us an edge for all the shots. We could try things out, which is not very common on these kind of projects. At Fire.Smoke, we're incredibly proud of this project. It really works really, really well as an introduction to the game. It is filled with lore, history, that you can just repeat and watch and watch again. I think it really serves as an amazing introduction to the game and it showcases in broad strokes really the story of the events that precede the game.